Welcome to video number 3 in my little CNC mill building series. When you see this clip I am basically finished with the whole machine and just some small details are left. And I can say that it works just awesome. But details on that in a later video. In this clip I will talk about mechanical details. I started the machine with a 35 by 35 cm particle board which is 38 mm thick and I used this board as a base plate. I actually wanted to use one 40mm thick board but I couldn't find one so I ended up gluing two boards together. I attached these sliders which are usually used for closet drawers. I have bought very long sliders for my project although I don't actually need that much travel distance. The reason for that is that the long sliders also come with a longer ball bearing cage and with 2x8 ball bearings. Shorter sliders usually only have 2x6. People have used these sliders for CNC machines before and I have read that they are not recommended by others because they cause quite some problems. That's actually true. The main problem with the sliders is that they can wobble. When I hold a slider like that and press it here, then you see that it's actually really stable in that direction because that's what the slider is made for. But you can see when I hold the slider like that and now press at this point, the inner part can actually move a bit up and down. Hang on, I will draw on a whiteboard what the problem with that is. I want to explain some situations here where these sliders can be used and where not. Remember, a slider looks like this, more or less. It has the inner part and the outer part and with the ball bearing cage in the middle. The inner part is able to slide sideways and it is stable in one direction, but it also wobbles a bit up and down like that. I saw a project using the sliders in this way. The sliders were attached to the ground plate as I draw it here and the CNC mill had a moving tool bridge that was attached to them more or less like that. The problem of the project was that the movement back and forth was ok, but the bridge also was able to wobble like that which gave the people quite some problems with their precision of the machine. I also saw a moving bed machine using sliders. The people used two wooden 2x4s and the sliders were attached to these bars. The work bed was in the middle, pretty much like a drawer would be built in a closet. Again, the movement back and forth was fine and they also could put pressure on the board without problems. But the shakiness of the sliders now affected the bed as follows. When you look at the bed like that, with the threaded axle over here and the motor over here, they found that the bed was spinning a bit. So when the force was applied here for example and the motor wanted to move the bed to the left, it was spinning counterclockwise, so like this basically. The precision of that machine was relatively low for that reason. So, despite all these problems I am sure that my design will work and here is why. I am using my sliders flat so that they can take a high force sideways. The wobble problem occurs when I apply pressure to the work bed. There is actually only one single point where pressure is applied to the work bed and this is where the milling tool presses down. My sliders have 8 ball bearings in each row and the ball rows are around 9 cm long. Now, my work bed needs to move by 16 cm and the ball cage will move half that distance. I have cut down my sliders to 20 cm length and the idea is, let's say my tool, my work spindle will apply pressure here. When I move the bed to the far right point, there will still be a ball bearing directly under the spindle. When I move the bed to the far left side, I see the same, so there is again a ball bearing under the pressure point. You can see that when I hold my slider here and apply the pressure here, it will hardly move anymore compared to what it has moved before. I started with attaching the sliders to my base plate. 
They need to be parallel to the edge, but more importantly, absolutely parallel to each other. I have used this plastic box to ensure that they are as parallel as possible, and also a vernier scale to see whether the distance between them is absolutely equal everywhere. I have attached the lower parts of my sliders to the base plate and assembled the sliders. To mount the first board, I aligned the board first as precise as I could and then glued it to the top of the sliders. On the next morning, my glue has dried. Wood glue does not stick on metal, but it holds enough so that I can slide off the top part now and precisely mark the positions where I need to drill holes. I drilled the holes at the right places and then attached the sliders. I have put a 3mm acrylic plate between board and each slider, because the sliders are only a centimeter thick and I need a little more space for the threaded rod and nut assembly. More about that in another clip. The second slider level is built in the exact same way. Again, I have used glue to attach the other halves of the sliders and then slid them off, drilled the holes and remounted them. The second slider is attached and I can move my work bed now in X and Y direction. Oops, there's a little noise. Oh yeah, this screw here touches the metal edge here a little bit, so I just need to grind that down a little. Not a big problem. Let's check whether everything is exactly horizontal. I have attached a pencil to my lamp here and now I lower it as close as possible to the board without touching it. I slide the boards in X and Y direction and the pen stays close to the board, but it is never touching the surface anywhere. And by the looks of it, the two boards are exactly vertical to each other, because the pencil stays parallel to the edges when I move only one direction. Now that that is finished, there's an interesting question that I want to figure out. How much does my construction bend under pressure? Because remember, the wobbliness of the sliders might be a problem. I slide my first board to the far left and then apply pressure to the edge of my second board, which is, so to speak, the worst case that can happen. My caliper shows how much the surface gives in. It is within a half millimeter when I press down my thumb. I also took a weight of 2 kilograms and put it on the edge, and see also here that the board moves less than a half millimeter down under pressure. I guess and hope that's stable enough especially when the spindle tool does not press down at the far edge but in the middle. That's it for this time. In the next video I will give some details about my electronic parts that I did not talk about in the last clip. I will also show that my electronics already works quite well although the machine is not built yet. See you next time.